Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this redgamingtech.com video, let's discuss the Ryzen 3000 series now that it's available and what position this leaves Intel in. So the 3000 series is easily one of the most hyped and anticipated launches in technology, at least for the past several years. The only event that I can think of that probably reached this level of fever pitch anticipation, ironically enough, was the original Ryzen launch back in the day. Not least of all because we've been stuck on four cores, eight threads for so long, thanks to Intel. So then, the 3000 series is now available, people are picking up the processor, and we are starting to see reviews and get a good idea of how the CPU performs in the real world. And the answer is, in the most part, extremely well. And it's hard to deny that AMD have done a very good job for these processors. For productivity and creative applications, well, the 3900X and eventually the 3950X when it launches in September are just simply unmatched by Intel's current mainstream lineup. There's an entirely separate argument we could go through when it comes to HEDT stuff, but that's not the purpose of this video. We are focused purely on mainstream, so the 9900K, excuse me, for example, versus the 3900X, for example. And in those situations, AMD just clearly beat Intel. There are a couple of applications that AMD do lose in or Intel can pay, compete favorably in, but in general, AMD do win. But I don't think many people expected any differently, including Intel themselves. After all, if you have more CPU cores, chances are very good that you're gonna beat your competitor. And given what we knew going into this, that AMD were looking for at least like 10 to 12% IPC gains, actually we'll learn much later on, it was gonna be a little bit higher than that compared to the original Zen architecture and a modest clock speed increase and more cores. Well, it was just a recipe for them to beat and defeat Intel with content creation stuff. It just, you know, it was just logical. So with that said then, gaming was what Intel have been really pushing for the past several months. And it makes a lot of sense. Back in the original Ryzen launch and even the Ryzen 2000 series, AMD just have not been able to take on Intel and the gaming performance. That's not to say that you can't game on, for example, the 2700X, because that, that's just silly. But in terms of minimum frame rates, in other words, if you're only gaming, Buying a 9700K or a 9900K is just a great upgrade or a great path for you. But things are very different now. The 3700X and even the 3600 make a compelling case for themselves, particularly if you already have an AMD platform. For the sake of this video, imagine someone who has a B350 motherboard and a Ryzen 5 1600. Well, all you have to do now, assuming your motherboard a manufacturer has provided a BIOS for you, simply flash your BIOS, put in a Ryzen 3600, and you've got a really nice tangible increase to gaming performance. And overall, you don't really need to do much, just simply change a cooler and put in a new CPU. It's gonna take you 10, 20 minutes, depending, maybe a little bit longer if you have to take your motherboard out because goodness knows, sometimes you need to undo the screws that are now located at the back of your motherboard. The reviews we've seen are actually quite interesting for gaming because there is actually quite a lot of disparity between the game benchmarks. And that's because, uh, well, quite honestly, certain motherboards have been sent out with BIOSes that just aren't functioning correctly for game workloads. Or to put it into a more correct term, with certain workloads, because games don't uh, push as many threads, for example, as let's say Cinebench R20, what happens with those benchmarks is that the CPU is just not boosting as high a frequency as what it should be. So obviously if you're missing 100, 200 or whatever megahertz, then that does affect performance. In fact, Anantech and a couple of other websites have wrote about this and are currently retesting a plethora of titles for that specific reason. Now, I don't think that that's gonna suddenly mean that uh, AMD take the gaming crown from Intel, but it will mean though that better consistency across different benchmarks. You also have to take into consideration other factors as well. Like some reviewers are using the, you know, the, the, the coolest that AMD send out. 
Others are using AIOs, others are using custom water cooling loops, others are using whatever you know air cooler they've got on hand. And then you've got other problems as well, like some reviewers are using older graphics cards, some reviewers are not uh, providing the, uh, oh, so including all the patches for Intel. So obviously that means Intel's performance is a little bit higher than what you would get otherwise. So yeah, there is a lot of discrepancy even outside of the BIOS itself. So then, Intel are almost certainly going to need to cut the prices possibly rather significantly for the ninth generation now that we see uh, what AMD are capable of for the Ryzen 3000 series. But there are definitely a couple of good pieces of news for Intel. The first is that the CPUs that we've seen thus far from AMD don't have much headroom when it comes to overclocking. Therefore, the good news is that if you are someone who picks up a 9900K, you can generally get uh, 5 gigahertz all cores without too much of a problem, and that does definitely increase minimum frame rates for games. It's not exactly a massive selling point for Intel, but it is something that will help them when the KS SKU goes on sale. The second positive is that when Comet Link finally launches, which is going to be 10 cores, Yes, it's nowhere near as uh, many as 12 cores or 16 cores, but a lot of folks don't really need that number of CPU cores, uh, particularly if they're only doing gaming. So if Intel can get a modest clock speed boost, we're not talking 500 megahertz here, I suspect, you know, maybe 5 gigahertz at the absolute max for all of the cores running. I, I would be surprised if it is that high, but let's just be super duper optimistic for a moment. I suspect that that may give them enough of an edge in gaming to push people to purchase the Comet Lake platform. What we do know about Comet Lake is that it is, however, a different platform compared to what we already have of the next generation. So that definitely means it's going to add a lot of frustration to people. So ironically, if you were thinking of picking up Comet Lake, you may say, well, I need to upgrade and change my motherboard anyway. So I'm just going to go with the 16 core 3950X. On the other hand, if there can be enough of a performance advantage in gaming, maybe people will go with Intel because, well, right now it's down to pricing. It's down to AMD to continue to keep on top of the market. And it's going to be really curious what happens when uh, we finally see Intel shift to 10nm because there's a real possibility that by that point AMD may have the next generation architecture out as well. This is definitely a good thing though because for us as consumers it means we finally have some really good competition in the marketplace. That's not to say that AMD weren't competitive before with Ryzen 2000 but now arguably for the most part game performance yeah it's faster on Intel but if you're not a competitive gamer, and often you're going to be GPU bound anyway, you probably won't really notice it. So I think Intel, for the short term, are going to be forced to cut their prices. I think that they may have a bit of hope with Comet Lake, although it really depends on what they can squeeze out of the clock frequencies, because I don't think there's any architecture changes. I've heard there may be one or small, very small changes to the architecture in terms of extra instruction stuff, but it's not going to be anything that really increases IPC for the average workload. Instead, it's going to be more neural network stuff and B flow and that type of thing. So it's not really going to affect the average gaming workload, although it is imperative to realize that those rumors are by no means substantiated and it's been more like uh, something that I've heard offhand not confirmed. What I do know though is that they are going to be changing the socket. What I do know is they're going to increase the core count to 10 cores and they are apparently shooting to increase the clock frequency. So it's going to be really interesting, I guess, what I'm saying over the next couple of months to see how uh, the BIOSes uh, and their performance impact on Ryzen 3000, and then also how Intel responds, both in terms of price cuts for the current ninth generation, along with the subsequent launch of the next generation CPUs. With all of that said, I want to hear what you think of Ryzen 3000. Are you disappointed? Are you excited? And are you picking one of those new processors up? Or are you going to wait for the 3950X? With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.